Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with quick and crispy home fries. That's right, I'm gonna show you my favorite shortcut method for doing amazing breakfast potatoes. And while we are gonna save a decent amount of time using this method, that's only the second best reason to use it. The real reason to use this technique is it produces home fries that don't just look perfect, but actually are perfect. Because a lot of home fries will look beautifully golden brown, but they just don't have that perfect contrast and textures between that crispy, crusty outside and a light, fluffy inside. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we have to talk taters. So what I have here are three peeled russets, which I think are the best choice. Okay, something like a Yukon Gold will also work, but what you really want to avoid is the ones with a waxy texture like your red potato. Those are just not going to get as crispy. And then what we're going to do to prep these is simply cut them in quarters. And as we do, we'll transfer those onto a plate. Because the first step here, and what's going to save us a good amount of time, is we're going to microwave these until they're almost soft, and then let them cool down completely. And how this was done at the hotel I learned this technique, is that the potatoes would be cooked in a steamer and then chilled. Which is a great way to do them. But the good news is we can totally simulate that at home using a microwave. So we'll go ahead and quarter those potatoes, and transfer those to a plate, spacing them as evenly as possible. At which point we'll microwave these for 4 minutes, or until just tender. And if you happen to have one of these covers, go ahead and use it. But if not, it will still work. And like I said, we're going to cook those for about 4 minutes, but you're going to have to figure that out depending on the size of your potato, and the strength of your microwave. But what we're looking for is those potatoes to just barely, almost be tender. Okay, a knife should be able to slide in, but we don't want these falling apart. So maybe do them just under what you do if you're making a potato salad. And by the way, if you're thinking, I can't make these, I don't have a microwave. Sure you do. It's in the break room at work. Sneak a few potatoes in, do them before you leave, and they're ready for the next morning. But anyway, what we'll do once our potatoes are cooked is let those cool down to room temp before cutting them up into smaller chunks. And me personally, I'm going to cut each one of these quarters into six, which I think is the best size. But do me a favor and don't cut them like this. That was terrible technique. Because we always want to cut with the flat side down. Plus, we could easily do two at once. So we'll go ahead and cut up our potatoes into whatever size we want. And then once that's all set, assuming these potatoes are fully cooled, we can move on to final production. Or we could just pop these in the fridge and do them later. Which is not a bad idea because they can come out even crispier. But I'm hungry, and these are cool enough. So I'm going to head to the stove to cook these up. Which I'm going to be doing in a nonstick pan, set over medium-high heat. And to the pan I'm going to drizzle in some olive oil, as well as add a couple slices of butter. Oh, and by the way, you know how they say opposites attract? This is the opposite of that. And what we're going to want to do is watch that butter melt with our potatoes right next to us. Because as soon as the foamy part of the butter just starts to think about turning brown, we're going to toss the potatoes in. Okay, so just stand there with your spatula ready. And as soon as the butter looks like this, we'll give the pan a swirl. And we'll transfer our potatoes in and sort of even them out as best we can. And what we'll do while we're waiting for the crustification process to start is go ahead and season these with some salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper. I think we'll also shock the world with a little shake of cayenne, as well as a small pinch of onion powder and garlic powder, which as you know is just pure granulated onion and garlic, no salt. And then last but not least, a little bit of paprika, which is not going to add much flavor, but as you'll see later, it really helps us achieve a gorgeous color. So we'll go ahead and season our potatoes, which by now should be starting to get a little bit crusty on the bottom. And at this point, we'll give them what is the first of numerous tosses. And you could do this with just a spatula. Although if you've mastered the flipping food in a pan technique, I find that much easier. And yes, of course we have a video for that. In fact, believe it or not, I teach you how to do that with cheese balls. Oh yeah, you heard me. Cheese balls. But anyway, whether you flip them or just toss them with a spatula, we're going to want to do that every few minutes until these potatoes are done. Which I'm going to take a wild guess and say is going to be about 10 to 12 minutes. But that really depends, so forget about the time. Just go by appearance and sound and taste and texture. So we will let those cook for a couple minutes and then give them a toss or flip or both. And then we'll let the bottom re-crisp up and crustify before we flip it again. And what we can do between flips, if we happen to see a couple potatoes that are obviously needing to be turned, we can give those some individual attention. But even if you don't do that, by simply flipping every couple minutes, eventually all those potatoes should get nice and crispy and crusty on the outside. And depending on your stove and pan, you may be able to stay right on medium-high heat the whole way. But towards the end, if it looks like it's getting too hot, you could reduce it down to medium. Okay, that's just you cooking. And basically we're just going to keep flipping and observing 
until we think they're perfect, as determined by you. Okay, you are, after all, the flow of how far to go. And by the way, if you got that Mel's Diner reference, you're pretty old, like me. So we'll simply keep cooking until we think they're done, which for me was right here. And that's it. Once our potatoes are looking and tasting like we want, we'll go ahead and transfer those onto a platter. And then you could probably just go ahead and eat these, but since I had to take some pictures, I snipped some chives over. Although I only had a couple, so it ended up being fairly pointless. But anyway, if you want to garnish those with some chive or some green onion or some other kind of herb, that would be fine. And that's it. Our quick and crispy home fries are done. Oh, remember that little pinch of paprika we added? That little touch really warmed up the color and helped make for what I think is just an incredibly gorgeous appearance. Which, while amazing, is still outdone by the taste and texture. Because by using this technique, we've reached what is considered the holy grail of home fries. And that's a crusty, crispy-edged exterior surrounding a light, fluffy interior. Okay, done properly, the inside of a home fry should be exactly the same texture as a perfectly made baked potato. And that's exactly what I had right here. But of course, what kind of crazy person just eats a plate of potatoes? So I went ahead and served those next to my famous five alarm scrambled eggs, which are called that because I use five different kinds of pepper. Well, actually just two, but that's okay. In the business, we call that creative license. And these eggs were so good, I would have been happy just to have that in the toast. But when we add these perfect home fries to the plate, I mean, come on, it just doesn't get any better than that. Unless we add a little bit of ketchup. Oh yeah, in the spirit of full disclosure, Chef John enjoys his home fries with ketchup. He also occasionally talks in the third person at the end of videos. But anyway, that's it. Quick and crispy home fries. Whether you enjoy yours with ketchup or not, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. <laughs>